What's going on? My name is Ferris Sabati. This is the Ask a Swim Pro Show. We are at the 2018 Pan American Masters Championships in Orlando, Florida, and I am joined by a special guest, Steve West from Huntington Beach. What's hey, going on? Not much. I'm getting ready to swim here, hopefully. All right, so what are you swimming here at the meet? I'm going to do 100 free, 200 IM, and all the breaststrokes. 50, 100, 200 breasts. What, what do you say is your best event? Uh, right now, 200 breasts is my best event. 200 breasts. Yeah. I'm Short course, long course. What do you like? Long course meters. So, long course meters. Yeah. And let's, uh, so we'll talk about this meet a little bit more, but I want to go back in time. Let's talk about your early swimming days. Okay. Uh, growing up, were you on swim team? What? Uh... Yeah, I was on swim team. I grew uh, born in Bloomington, Indiana. I moved to California when I was nine years old and uh, you know, living in Huntington Beach. We were on the beach all the time with junior lifeguards and st things like that. So grew up through Golden West Swim Club and then on to University of Michigan. And then after that, Irvine Nova Aquatics for five years before I retired the first time. For the first time? Oh, right. the second time. First time, second time. What, what is, okay, let's back up. So first time, what's the first time retired? I would say, okay, well, in uh, 96, I was third in Olympic trials in the 200 breast and okay. fourth in the 100 breast and I retired. Okay. But just about a few months later, I, I, had, I got a job and started working and I didn't feel real good about mm. my physicality at that point. And I guess maybe was exhibiting some of those symptoms that people get when they go from mm. training all the time to not training. Sure. Went back to Dave Salo, who was a coach in Irvine at the time. And I asked him, hey, can I still swim? And he was gracious enough to say, yeah, let, I would love to have you swim. Come when you can, uh, do the best you can. And just, I would go train with him as hard as I could and still worked and did that work-life balance at a pretty young. And I'm really lucky that he had the vision to let us do that because most coaches at the time would have been all or nothing. Sure. So I, that was the first time I retired. And then I swam all the way to through 2000 and then I retired again at that point. After trials? After trials in, in 2000. I did. I retired kind of permanently, I had my kids, kept working on my business, things like that. And then you came back from retire, second retirement, when was it? Well this? I guess, um, you know, during that 10 year period mm -hmm. I was surfing a lot when I could, yep. but raising my kids and you know work was super stressful, I'm in high tech, mm -hmm. software, a lot yep. of and I remember, you know, had kind of stress related things going on. And my doctor's like, well, you know, swimming's really good for that. And I was like, oh, well, I can do that yeah. is what I was thinking. So I started doing masters at Irvine again. Like mm -hmm. I would I wouldn't say I was completely away from the sport, but yeah. I would come in like once a month or like sure. once a month, once every couple months and train with the team and not yeah. not in good shape. But in 09, at the end of the year, I started training again. And that's when all of this started. Okay, so from 09, so that was almost 10 years ago now. Yeah, I guess so. Now. And you you made a run, you, you swam at the Olympic trials again in That's 2012, right. correct? So yeah. what what did you swim there? I swam both the breaststroke, 100, 100 breasts and 200 breasts, yeah. And was it was it your goal, like, I'm going to compete at the Olympic trials, or no. did it just happen? <laughs> no, well, my real goal, the year that I ended up qualifying was 2011, and I went to this master's meet, um, or local one, and I hadn't done the 200 breast. Mm. And a, since 2000 and, and long course, I was like mm -hmm. kind of afraid to do it. And uh, Ed Moses was there and he, that was yeah. when he was starting to make his comeback. comeback and he, was, yeah. he like kind of tricked me into the doing the turn of oh, breast. Really? He's like, oh, let's do the turn of breast. And I'm like, okay, I'll sign up. And then I did it and then he didn't do it. I was like, what the heck? So I ended uh, up doing the two, I ended up doing the turn of breast and I went really fast for what I, I thought was really fast for myself. Mm -hmm. I ended up like a 224 <laughs> first time out. And I was like, wow, let me, let me do a, a bigger meet to see yeah. what I can do. So I went, I signed up for the Swimming to Champions in Mission Viejo, mm -hmm. which was dual sanctioned. And I was like, let me just see what I can do, shave down for this, and ended up going 220 there. Woo. And that's when, that day is when I realized that, uh, or I, Jason Marsteller, who was at Swimming World at the time, had yeah. emailed me and, or messaged me and said, hey, you just qualified for Olympic trials. I'm like, oh, I did? Oh, so you got the cut and you didn't even know about no. it. Well. <laughs> I was really shooting to try to break the record for that age group, which okay. was a which was better than the. Than oh, the I actually okay. missed the record, but I happened to be qualifying for trials. Oh, and wow. pretty much right after that, everyone's like, "Oh, uh, they they put an article out about it," and everyone, all my friends were like, "Hey, you know, how's your training coming?" And I'm like, "Wait a minute." <laughs> Well, how do you know about this? And, it, and it, I didn't know if I was going to do it or not. I had to unretire with USA Swimming and oh, do all got this it, stuff. Got it, got it. But one of my teammates on Nova had basically told me, it's like, Steve, you have to do this because <laughs> this would, is my goal, you know? Like, if, if I could go, I would go in a heartbeat. Yeah, so I'm yeah. like, oh yeah, you know what? You're right, I should do it. And so really it was that moment that 
my teammate Scott Jackson mm -hmm. told me <laughs> that I had to do it, yes, so I did it. Yes. And, I, and I was really glad I did it. It was a really great experience. So I guess what part does the team aspect have? Because you're, you're training and swimming, it's individual, but then the yeah. fact that there's you have teammates, former yeah. teammates, how important is that to keep you motivated? Absolutely critical. I do not know how some of you out there go train on your own. A lot of respect for you. It's hard. <laughs> uh, there, there, I know of a bunch of people. I know of one who, uh, an older guy that swims on my at my pool mm. at a Lowe's Cab, which is one of our pools at Nova. He trains by himself. He just broke the world record for the Amazing. 60 to 65 or, in a mile because oh, he, he pounds out like five, six, seven. Andy Bray pounds out like 6,000 yards a day all by himself. And Dang. I'm like, I do not know how he does that. Oh, but God. for me, I need to be on the team. Being a breaststroker is really lucky because I can like go race like someone doing backstroke or breast you know uh, yeah. freestyle so i have someone to race pretty much no matter where All i go time. Uh -huh. sure. yeah what, so what does your swimming look like right now like what's your how much swimming are you doing what are you doing out of the water i'm sure people want to know yeah. like yeah weight training stuff what are you okay doing? so i'm really lucky right now because my daughters um just made it up into the senior team on no irvine and uh they got a you know I started in uh, November taking her to her morning practices, mm. so I'm lucky enough to train with their group quite okay. a bit. Senior team. The senior team in Irvine. There's three different locations. The one in Fountain Valley, Los Cab. Training yeah. with them, and uh, the, per the workouts are obviously more challenging yeah. than the Masters, so I'm in actually really a lot better shape than I have been yeah. in a while. So I've been training with her, not with her, but in her group. She does yeah. she does distance free, so we're like nah. different lanes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, I also train with the masters when there aren't mm. practices there. It's not 100% there, so then I'll yeah. train with my normal team norm when I yeah. can't do that. Probably four or five times a week right now in okay. the water. And then out of the water, I have I do Pilates. I've been doing mm. it for six years, and I really, really like it for uh, abdominal work and stretching yep. and things like that. And then I also lift, but that's maybe once a Right now, I haven't been lifting a ton because once mm -hmm. I, if I lift too much, that it, it packs, it, it packs my flexibility, yeah. and flexibility is so critical to swimming mm -hmm. that I, I'm really careful about when I'm lifting a lot. So fall, like after this meet, I'm going to get in the weight room again mm -hmm. for a few months where I don't have to swim fast. So what's the difference in training that you're doing in the last five to ten years compared to what you did at University of Michigan oh, or yeah. even growing up? Like, what's how have you seen it change for you and overall? Well, growing up, I w my team was, I wouldn't say we were a distance team and I wouldn't say we were a sprint team. We had a real the nice distance. balance. My coach, yeah. we did distance stuff and we did, you know, for the time he was really ahead of time. He did, we had a coach scope, which was one of those underwater cameras. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we, he filmed us, we had a power rack and we did a lot of stroke power work and yeah. IM. Mm -hmm. And so I was really lucky that I had a coach who was really progressive. Mm -hmm at the time and that's why like when I hear coaches talk about how hard it is a video I'm just like what the hell <laughs> we had VCR 25 years ago <laughs> we did a VHS <laughs> tape and and it was really helpful to have the the feedback see it yep so growing up a lot of stroke work and out of high school I was I ended up getting becoming really pretty mm. fast and then at Michigan we did it was really great because I got to swim with really amazing swimmers there uh, everyone world class around me, and that, that's when I realized, wow, you know, I thought I was pretty tough, but <laughs> I'm not as tough as a lot of those guys, Mike Berriman, Eric oh, yeah. Namesnick. Oh my God! Oh, yeah. So I re I learned there, like, you know, how how to train hard, mm -hmm. um, and what real long tr long work training work was like. And now, how much distance are you swimming, and like, what's your average? workout volume and weekly total volume well okay I don't actually count the volume mm -hmm. but um, when I was doing just Nova Masters our practices are about an hour an hour and 15 minutes mm -hmm. so I, I would say that's usually three grand ish 3k but a lot of what I do because I'm a breaststroke specialist as mm -hmm. I spend time I spend in probably an ordinate amount of time on breaststroke yeah just because of the crunch of time sure. and then now with the my daughter's team they practice a little longer so sure. i'm getting a little more distance than i was oh. so I, I don't know probably four thousand ish average in her maybe five in it on, on a saturday practice i'll go more i'll try to do the whole the whole practice with them so yeah. but i do not i don't count the volume i really focus on doing good technique in the technique, practice yep doing things, I try every practice I have at least one or two challenge sets or ch sets that I end up challenging myself on, going close to race pace or faster than race pace or maybe it's a distance set where mm -hmm. I try to go three, 
you know, six 100s on 130 breaststroke or something like that. Mm. I'd, I'll, I'll pick something and be like, okay, yeah, I'm feeling good now and I'm ready to challenge myself. Six 100s on 130 breaststroke. Yeah. So is that, is that threshold or are you trying to like best average that? Yeah, like, like best average, 107 average, you 108. That. Yeah. What's your stroke, is that yet yards? Strokes. Yeah, yards. yards, yards. What's your stroke count? Um, four or five per lap. Four or five per lap. Yeah. So That's things good. like that. Uh, what, do you have any favorite, so six 100s, 130 breast. Do you have any other favorite sets that you use to like benchmark yourself or you do leading into taper? I don't have anything specific mm -hmm. um, that I do. Like I don't have a routine for that, but like I usually can start feeling if I'm my strokes working or not working or by my pace or by how, how I feel in the water. Mm -hmm. So like a lot of 50s maybe is kind of how I would measure. Where and I'm how at. Do, you, do you measure by field, time, stroke count? Yeah, stroke count, time, how hard it was. Mm -hmm. So, and, and luckily, oh, I forgot to mention my daughter's team our group and on our particular location we have long course all year round Ooh. not every day but That's you know nice yeah so i've been enjoying the long the long distance do you prefer training long course i know you prefer racing long course but do you prefer training long course or short course i yes and no, no. um <laughs> long, breaststroke short course is really hard because of all the turns pull outs pull outs yeah, yeah. and i really so i like Right now, I'm really enjoying that. I'm lucky to be able to go long course and then short course, short course, long course, short, you know, so we're uh, okay. alternating. Sure. So I get, because in long course, the real benefit of that is like, I am can get into a rhythm and just mm -hmm. go like a 200 sure. or a 300 breast, like, and, yeah. Well, that's the other thing I'm doing late, more lately is I'm making sure that I go the distance. Like, yeah, putting in the work. <laughs> even if it's not all out, I'm trying to do a whole 200 or a 300 because even if you're going easy, it still gives you in that pain zone. So it's yes. more, yeah. <laughs> so I do like, as I get, and basically towards the end of the meet, um, this summer I've been swimming really fast and I've been doing like swimming all the way through the Saturday before the meet, like normal, and then I'll just rest like three or four days. That's mm. kind of what I've been doing. So what, and we've talked about this before, but like your thoughts on the concept of taper and like how do you approach leading into a meet. Do you taper? How do you focus on a meet specifically? Right. Well, back in the day, we would cut down on the volume, right? The a lot, volume. but I don't have a lot of volume. Sure. So as I get closer to the meet, I might just cut down on some of the intensity or increase the intervals that more we're rest. Doing. Yeah, a little more rest. And then like the, just a few days before the meet, try not to do hardly anything. Just kind of just We meet warm, warm up, meet warm up, meet couple warm pace. Up. Yeah. What's a meet warm up? How long is that? I warm up till I feel like I'm ready to go. That's Until you're ready to my go. approach. Yeah, Until a lot of swimmers do that. I mean, a lot of swimmers that I know. I would say it's probably about a grand. Maybe 1K. if I'm not feeling good, it take, might be longer. Okay. Like I'll, if I'm not feeling good, I'll actually slow down mm. and like try to regroup. Um, you know, like make sure that I stretch out mm. my body. And breaststroke's so rhythm rhythm oriented. Yes. So for me, it's really good to just kind of dial it back longer longer Nail so the timing. yeah so if i'm or i'll do a double warm-up where if i'm not mm -hmm. feeling good i'll warm up like warm up once and come back and warm up again sure so what uh what do you have coming up after this meet so we're racing in orlando yeah. what's what do you have planned out for the next six months year kind of looking forward okay so i don't have um any specific plans other than i'm going to try to swim i think there's a meet in arizona and mesa mm -hmm. right before thanksgiving or the mm -hmm. one in our area spms okay. and commerce Sure. one of those two meets for short course meters mm -hmm. and then take it as it comes um the other times like i don't plan that far ahead for like regular meets because mm -hmm. i'm my regular meet weekends are at my daughter's meets yeah <laughs> so are you are you playing uh backup timer or are you just spectating or <laughs> no you did well you know we have to do the volunteer, volunteer hours, hours for my team so yeah we were, we were just hosting uh national so sure. i couldn't come to this meet until i left yesterday yeah. where we have things going on all week so, so you were at nationals and you saw the fast, fast swimming and... Yeah, I got to see some fast swimming and I was a ticket taker on one of the days and that was a lot of fun. <laughs> what do you think? So looking at the elite international scene, when you see people like Dressel go 17-6 know. or Ledecky, you know, whatever she's throwing down. Yeah. Uh, do you think, you know, people say at a certain point it will slow down, but it keeps getting faster. So where do you see the next 10 years? A fast swimming. Well, Dressel like, just raised the bar on how the starts are done and turns are done. I, I think everyone's going to adapt to that and it. you'll see the sport elevate. I mean, it's really interesting to watch swimming now because like to me, I look at it like they're just a lot more in control and more stable. 
mm. when they swim. They're not thrashing around. Yeah, not, and I think that there's a lot of room to still improve, mm. honestly. So you think the next decade, it just we're gonna keep accelerating yeah. best times, world records? Yeah, I think so. I think there's a lot of room. I mean, I'm just, thank God we swam back when it was easier, <laughs> <laughs> so to speak. But yeah, uh, it's all relative. <laughs> yeah, it's relative, but I look at the times now and it's, it's, it's funny because it's mental too. Like mm. you, we think, oh, that's so fast. And but those kids them, grew up, they know. 18, yeah. that's, what it, that's what the standard is. Well, they see if someone does a 17. If that's you're 10 what, right now. you got to go. <laughs> yeah, they're going to have to go. But it's doable because he, you know, he just, it, when I watched it, I was like I'm very impressed with how, you know, he, he's ahead about this far. But off of it, the dive, yeah. Yeah, from the dive. So that means that everyone can improve their dives. Sure. And he was sharper on the turn and sharper yeah. through those things. So When we broke down his 50, it basically just looked he did yeah. everything a little bit better than yeah, everyone. Yeah, right. And the cumulative effect is yeah. 17 versus 18 versus 19. I think it's all about stability and control of mm -hmm. how you swim. And, you know, when you go watch the old videos from older Olympics, mm -hmm. the, you can tell it's not, it's hard to pit, it's hard to like put a, word to it like what it all is mm -hmm. but it's the com the cumulative uh, effect of you know mm -hmm. turns better start better underwater's yeah. better all these things so kids are learning from um, all us old people how to how <laughs> what we did and they're doing it better speaking of us more experienced people <laughs> back <laughs> right. to, we're here at the masters <laughs> games what advice do you have for people who maybe they used to compete whether high school or college yeah. and they, and they want to get back into it or they just got back into it, but they're maybe yeah. intimidated or, you know, they see like world records get broken and they're like, oh, I, I'm not there. So well, first of all, don't be intimidated because sure. this isn't about who places what sure. or anything like that. I mean, it's about like leading a healthy lifestyle. I work in computers where I'm sitting all day long. So yep. for me, the pool is like a major beautiful outlet to go mm -hmm. and completely get my mind off of computing, computing and software and all this other stuff. Plus, I'm like sitting all day and I have a sit stand desk, thank goodness, but <laughs> sitting or standing versus like moving around. Yeah. I mean, we're made to be physical people. Yeah. So for me, like the meets really make it so that I go to practice and have something to do to mm -hmm. stay fit. And I feel, I feel like I'm a lot healthier than most people our age. And I look up at a lot of older master swimmers and respect what they've done. And it's like a lot better lifestyle mm -hmm. to lead, I think. So. Don't be intimidated. Just go out and have fun with your teammates. You know, you can drink beer at the meet a little bit. Not, you know, a little bit crazy. <laughs> well, after the meet, but you know, it's it should be a relaxed environment. Um, and just go have fun and don't try to like take it too seriously. Really, I mean, that's the big thing. I think that's great advice. Yeah. And with that. Thanks so much for joining yeah. us for the Ask a Swim Pro Show. We're here in Orlando at the Pan American Masters Championships thanks. where 2,500 people are racing from 43 different countries. That's awesome. Steve, thanks so much. Thanks for having me. We'll catch you guys later. Thank Bye. You. Bye.